Hey everybody, uh, it's Danny and Bree. Uh, I know this is different than how we normally start episodes, but I wanted to tell you, unfortunately, I screwed up when I was recording this episode and accidentally did it in immersive mode. Uh, basically, it's going to jump around to every, each one of our faces uh, as opposed to showing all of us. If that gets to the point where it's too difficult to watch, please minimize it and continue to listen to it. Yeah. There are some very important messages about suicide prevention in this episode, and we really want to get that information out there, especially if you're hurting. Uh, we will put the info in the um, up here and down in the info below. Um, just please remember one thing while you're watching this. You are valued, you are loved, and you are needed. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and we love you. Thank you for, for watching uh, Girl Dad Girls, and enjoy the episode. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Girl Dad Girls. We are here with the best group of girls in the history of the world. I've got the QT Danny B. I've got my bestie Bree St. Marie. Of course, I am Ravishing Rachel. And mm -hmm. then today, let me tell you, I'm so freaking pumped. We have got an absolutely amazing guest today. Her name's Emily, you're gonna love her. Emily, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, yeah, my name is Emily. My pronouns are she, her. I've been in transition for, um, for I guess, about seven years. And we can get into why I'm a little confused about how long it actually is. Um, and when I, I came out, I was really shocked by the response I got. There was, there was positive response. And I didn't even think that that was possible. And that set me down on this path to help share that information with others and make sure that other people like me knew that they were not alone, that it was possible for you to come out and live as yourself and be happy. So I started down this path and eventually started the transgender show where I interview people uh, each week and we share our stories of transition and gender exploration. Then from that, I built an entire organization around that to help trans people through their journey. So um, that's the transverse. And uh, those are the sort of things I'm doing these days. Is that that's amazing? Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Rachel. I was gonna say that's amazing. I'm just yeah. curious. Mm -hmm. Um, so like you said, like you have a weekly show. Like, where's that show at? Is that on YouTube? Is that on Instagram? Like, where's that at? It's on Twitch. It's live on Twitch on Tuesday oh, nights wow. at 6 p.m. Pacific. And um, the thing I, I like about Twitch, the reason I glommed onto that was one, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm kind of bad at social media, but two, I love the idea of having the live audience there, the live chat where people can interact, ask questions, you know, throw in feedback and all of that and, and really be a part of the conversation. So, um, you know, and, and unfortunately, Twitch being what it is, is hasn't been super successful for us, but we've done pretty good on YouTube with our videos there. And the, the way that it, it has really resonated with people, it was as a podcast. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Um, like, uh, I guess, what was it that, uh, I guess, how, how did you get started with that? Did you start like a, a nonprofit or was this just sort of something that you started kind of like this podcast where we just sort of said, hey, let's just do this? Um, I just started the the show as a I I want I want to do this and I'm gonna figure it out. The main thing is I I uh, in 2019 as I started to kind of uh, accept my my gender identity, you know the fact that I was trans, I, I decided that I needed to follow some trans girls. So I started doing that on Instagram and finding more and more people to follow and just kind of see what it was to be trans and and for a long time even thereafter trying to figure out am i really trans like am i really trans am i making a mistake am i am i really trans um but one of them megan bound said that she was going live on she did a, a live on instagram so she was going live on twitch and i'm like i don't know what that is followed her over there it was fun watching her then she talked about a show that she was on which was the transvengers um, and it was uh, four girls who got together every week and awesome. answered uh, questions live about yeah. their gender experience. And um, that that was what sparked it because I had this idea that I need to get this this information out to people. And I'd been in Toastmasters. So I was working on my ability to speak in public and, um, you know, was trying to kind of find a venue, find a way to disseminate this information. And when I saw Twitch and I saw the fact that you could have a live show, have have the chat there and have everybody interacting, I'm like, okay, you know, that was just the the light bulb, the epiphany. And I I started very soon thereafter. And so on June 
oh, why am I blanking? It's either June 6th or June 8th, whatever the uh, Monday was in uh, 2020 was when I started. And oh, wow. we haven't we haven't looked back. We've hit about we're almost to, to the 140th, 145th episode. So, oh, you know. That's amazing. Awesome. Hey, wow. we'll get there one day. <laughs> and I maybe I shouldn't mention this yet. I don't know. We're actually we actually are gonna have one of the OG Transvengers on our show here very, very soon. Nice. Who did you get? And, confidential information okay <laughs> that's where we'll i'm tell, gonna draw we'll the tell line. you after the cut <laughs> <laughs> i gotta tell you i have been friends with michaela for uh for a couple of years now like you know i've got mm-hmm. her, her number we text and all of that and i have not been able to get that b word on the show um <laughs> still 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 trying i gotta i gotta bug her again <laughs> it's okay maybe somebody can put in a word maybe someone <laughs> Like I said, I've got the direct connection. I can put in the word. I can, um, you know, call her or I can uh, message her fiance and be like, hey, get her on my show. Um, I'm actually, the funny thing is I'm actually better friends with Michaela's mom than Michaela herself. But uh... interesting. <laughs> That's funny. Um, I love how, I love how, like, I love how we're like just a community. You know what yes. I mean? Mm-hmm. Like for the most part, we are a freaking community. Not always going to see eye to eye on every little thing, but for the most part, we're here for each other. And I love yeah. that. Well, yeah, um, it, it, you know, there's the, the six degrees of Kevin Bacon, like with trans people, it's not even that many. It's like maybe three and you can get to anybody in the trans community. It's That's yeah. So and I've, I've noticed on Instagram, especially like reaching out to people. I honestly, before I started transitioning, you know, I used to reach out to people that, you know, had 25, 30, 40,000 followers, just like maybe drummers or something, uh, you know, we're talking about drumming soon, but I'd reach out to like famous drummers or whatever that had like these massive followings, never hear back. But mm-hmm. I realized that you reach out to trans girls who have these big followings and, you know, they're just so nice and they, they respond. Mm-hmm. Everybody's just oh, really, yeah. really friendly and helpful. Yeah. Um, I did want to ask you something you mentioned is you said that uh, you had a good experience coming out. People were, did you have people that were, you thought were going to have a bad reaction that actually had a much better reaction than you were expecting? Yeah. So um, it was a weird sort of out of body experience for me when I actually officially came out. Like it was, it was, it was at work was what, where it happened. I'd, I'd sort of been doing stuff here and there, but, uh, it was, you know, very dipping the toe in. And one day just randomly, I got up and I dressed, I put makeup on, I dressed in a blouse and a skirt and heels and drove to work. N- nope. No word to them, no, no conversation with HR, nothing. And this was a, a global company. We had over 200 people just in my office alone. Um, and I, I was driving into work. And then all of a sudden, I'm about halfway there. I sort of like snap into consciousness. And I'm like, oh, my God, what am I doing? Um I'm I'm going to to go there. I'm going to lose my job. No one's going to talk to me again. You know, I just had this massive panic. Uh-huh. And um, like I said, it was a really it was a really out of body experience. At that moment, I couldn't understand what had driven me to dress the way I did. Um, it, it was it was it was really strange. And I <laughs> I look back, and luckily, I say. I had a boss who was just really anal about the clock. And I, I, because of him, I did not have the option of turning around and going back home and oh, changing wow. my clothes. Um, so I was in this panic state and I was stuck and I just, I, I had this weird uh, third person conversation with myself and I'm like, okay, I don't know why we decided to dress this way this morning. Like, like right now, I'm not, I'm not feeling, I'm not understanding it, but there was a reason and it was important to us enough to where um, we're in this situation. So the only thing we can do is honor that, honor ourselves, get our own back and, and go in and hold our head up high. And it was like the longest walk ever from my car to the front door of the office. And then just praying the entire time that nobody came in the elevator with me. 
luckily I was alone there. And then walking through the the office, I, I just, I tried to keep my head up and be like, nothing to see here. Like nothing different. No, no big deal. Everything's normal. Um, yeah. Everything's <laughs> normal. But inside I was just like, oh, this is, this is my last day at work. And it wasn't too long after I was at work where people started stopping by my desk or sending emails or calling me and, and basically congratulating me saying, uh, um, I, I, I can't imagine the level of courage it took for you to come in and, 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 you know, express yourself. Um, you know, a lot of, a lot of people impressed with the courage and, um, just so happy for me that I was, you know, being my true self. And like I said, at yeah. that point, I could not fathom that, that response. That was not a possibility in my brain. I was like really confused at first. It, I, if, um, I if you don't. Uh, uh, I, I, just real quick, I, I realized it took me a while, but I started to realize it was both good and bad. But the fact that I wasn't the center of everyone else's universe, like I thought I was, was really depressing at first, but then I was like, oh, wow, no one cares that I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. They just, as long as I'm not hurting them, they don't care, which is like, oh, no, nobody cares, but nobody cares. So, yes, that's awesome. Yeah, you're now. like, oh, yay, nobody cares. <laughs> Wait, nobody <laughs> cares? Like, nobody? <laughs> um, where <laughs> Maybe one, please. <laughs> you, you, uh, and and uh, feel free to tell me to shut the fudge up, but where about in the in the world are you? Oh, um, I'm in Southern California. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So, you know, California, one of the better states for LGBT acceptance and all of that. And uh, this specific city, a little bit more conservative. But um, yeah, the, the thing that I found was that the people that are are that really have your back are really sweet and really kind, caring people are the ones that'll come up and say something and send you an email and all that and, and be there. They'll show up for you. And the ones that have a problem with it, they just kind of that 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 I'm picturing the meme of Homer Simpson just fading into the bush. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's that's just what happens. <laughs> oh, gosh, that you are, that. Yeah. You're you're <laughs> so sure that um you, you've got this fear built up in your head and you're so sure that it's going to be this massively ne negative reaction. I should speak in the the first person tense. Like I was just so convinced that those were the people that were going to show up, that were gonna You'd be coming at me um, and, uh, you know, be on attack. And like I said, they just, I, I didn't see any of them. I didn't, I didn't see much at all. It was, it was, it was, like I said, it was hard to, to understand in that moment. It was a very confusing day. Yeah. Now I can, I can definitely sympathize with that. That kind of sounds like my experience. All of my coworkers were amazing, um, but some of my residents have been kind of shits. Um, so that kind of that was the worst part of it. But they're they're dinosaurs, so it's fine. Sorry, everybody, but it's true. <laughs> hey, Breeze Rose, yeah. fuck you. Yeah, I'm leaving anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I'm, I don't worry. It's okay. I can say it. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Sorry. like my experience was kind of the opposite. Um, but I'm just curious what I'm not going to I'm not going to pry and ask what the company is. But what is the line of work? Is this more like yeah. IT? Is this more like retail? Like what kind of what kind of business are we talking about? It was essentially a, a consulting service, you know, helping make ah. products, products and services better. Got you. Okay, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Where, was, is this sort of, again, I guess, uh, you know, also feel free to not answer this, but is would you say the average age is on the older side or younger side? It was a, when I came into the company, it was just switching over from being a family company. They just sold it and sold mm -hmm. out. And so it, um, one of the things that I always said about it is uh, it was amazing because the way it was run was very corporate, very money and numbers and that, that whole, you know, the whole typic, typical, typical, um, oh, why am I blanking? Jesus, uh, capitalism thing, just the whole, oh. it was just pure capitalism. Uh, and yet they still managed to hire 
amazing people, really smart, hardworking, and really kind and uh, really kind people. And so one of the, the things that I love to do was I was really involved in the, in the employee groups, you know, and, and I knew pretty much everybody there and it was just a, a really good, it, it maintained that family atmosphere uh, in, in large part. And I, I don't think it had anything to do with that or whatever, but because of the growth that we had and a lot of things, we had a lot of young people that were coming in. We had a lot of the old guard who had been there since the company was um, uh, about since when the, the company was founded. And it, it was a really good mix. It was a good mix. So it was, yeah, it was everybody. It was all walks of life. Yeah. I, uh, I found that like, so I work in tech and I came out, I was expecting to have a lot of pushback and it was, seamless everybody was just like you know congratulations i think they <clears throat> realized that if they had a negative reaction hr was going to get involved pretty quickly but it's interesting that you were worried about losing your job uh what was how did you what did you think was going to happen do you think like your boss was going to say no one wants to work with you you're out of here it just seems like a lawsuit waiting to happen yeah. And, and there was no, there wasn't a lot of logic to it. And there wasn't um, an, an understanding of the law. It was just like this, it, this can't be acceptable to people. Really? I had so much built up uh, internalized homo or transphobia um, or just the understanding that society um, does, does not like people like that. And I had such, I had so little understanding of the community and what the identity meant, where it came from, you know, I was still, I was still struggling with, you know, is this just a fetish? Is this something that comes from a, a, a kink? So, you know, I came from such an uneducated place with, within, uh, about the community. Um, and then as far as rights and all of that, knew none of that. I just thought, yeah, I'm going to go in. They're going to say, thank you, but no. <laughs> really? Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And like, I, I fully, fully get that because I, when I came out, I was working in retail sales and my immediate thought, and I literally, from when I started my transition medically to when I actually came out was about a good six months. Like it wasn't immediate. Like I was on hormones for a while before I came out mm -hmm. and I told my boss literally crying in her office. <laughs> um, I'm like, I don't even know if you want me working here anymore because you're not going to want someone like me interacting with the customers. And she looks at me and she's like, you're being stupid. And I'm sitting here. I'm like, I know, but still. <laughs> yeah, but, but, <laughs> but you yeah. have to agree with me because. You know. yeah, no, yeah. absolutely. It was, it's that do or die moment that we've all had. You know, and then with comes with that moment is all the irrationality of everything that can happen, will happen, and probably won't happen, but you still think it will. Mm -hmm. Like the uh you going up to your uh to the chopping block <laughs> through the elevator, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. yeah <it's> <laughs> Which would be ridiculous, but you know, I still think that too. I came well, in and then my first day on when I was out and is just like oh, I'm done. I, I thought the same thing. I'm like, I am toast today. <laughs> like irrationally no reason didn't All happen over. though bye bye still here yeah toodaloo mm -hmm. yeah and um it's funny because well, when was it it was it was a while later i'm 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 a little foggy on the details but i want to say it was more than i want to say it was more than two weeks later but i got a strange you know a strange unmarked email uh meeting request from hr and I'm like, okay, so I survived that first period, but now here it comes. And I walk in um, and it's just the HR guy in the office that has, in, in the one office in the whole building that had no windows to it whatsoever. And the, the one solid door. Um, no. And it's just the HR guy. And I'm like, ah, oh, crap, ah, oh, crap. And then I, um, he's not really saying anything. And my, my boss walks in after that and I'm like, okay, yep, that's it. We had a good run. Um, and, uh, the first thing he said was first thing we want to, we want to say, you know, of course, speaking for the company is that 
um, uh, there's nothing wrong with what you're doing. And, you know, he just launched into his whole thing. Um, and it was, they were really supportive. My boss was very quiet. He and I did not get along well. He did not, uh, I, we never had any direct conversations about it other than sort of what happened in that room. And he didn't, like I said, he didn't talk much, but, uh, yeah, it, it never came up. We just, we were just always, there was always a ton of friction for multiple reasons, but, um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I did, I did have another a brief panic of like, okay, now, now I'm losing my job. That was, I don't know, a persistent thing. My, I love that. I love that, um, that you said it was a brief panic of like, I'm going to lose my job because, and I'm, I'm not proud of this, but it's a story that needs to be told. Um, the reason I came out at work when I did was because I knew, knew that I was on the chopping block. I was on the chopping block for sales performance. <laughs> and so I sit down with my boss and I'm like, listen, I said, there's something that's going on in my head. Hasn't been in the right place because of this. And she's like, okay. And I'm like, well, I'm sure some people have noticed that I've started wearing tighter jeans that I haven't cut my hair, that I got my ears pierced that I bought pink shoes because I thought they were nice and frilly. Well, this is what happens. So it's like, this is what's happening. And I chuckle because my best friend who works at that same store heard my boss telling one of the assistant managers, well, we can't fire them now. <laughs> no. Get it. <laughs> <laughs> Like boom, protected class. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> you wanted that lawsuit? Shield. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Buy me a boat. Uh, <laughs> I dare you to fire me yeah. now. Yeah. Um, All wait. I hear is Star Trek. Shields up. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and you know, somebody mentioned Matrix earlier, and I just, I just picture Morpheus. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, how how long ago was so you, uh, you said you came out at work how long ago i i believe that was oh actually I, i'm i'm really unclear about it i think it was uh seven or eight years ago oh wow okay um so yeah uh, i think the the december of 2015 i think it was wow so I'm i on that note you kind of steered into my next question danny um I was going to ask you when we first started, when we first started the episode, you were a little non-committal on when you started your transition. Mm -hmm. I want to know that story. Okay. So uh, this moment where I, I showed up at work, um, you know, I'd already been doing a bunch of work. I was um, currently separated from my wife um, because I needed to explore whatever this was. Um, I was getting to the point of going out in public. I was obviously shopping for myself a lot. I believe I had my ears pierced. Yeah, I had my ears pierced at that point and was doing some of those same things that you were on on sort of a, a stealth level, Rachel. But um, uh, I was I was building up to it and and had no understanding of what it was. I came out at work as a cross-dresser. I went after that thing happened at work and, and went and told my family, came out to my, my parents and my brothers as a cross-dresser and lived as such for a while. Uh, it was actually the the females at work that um, like pushed me, pushed me hard into using the women's restroom. And I... And I wouldn't do that until I, I changed my name um, with the company. I still haven't done it legally and we can get into that in a, in a minute, but um, you know, that I, I was, I was fearful of every single next step in transition. I was, I was terrified. I had it in my brain that yeah. at some point something was going to kick in and I was going to regret it. I was going to realize that this was just a whatever and, and it was going to go away and I'd be, you know, left in this position of, of like, <laughs> just kidding y'all. And I, like, I was, I was terrified of that. So each step I really resisted and pushed back hard on. So um, sorry for the uh, combination of words there, but um, I, it, it, I think I, I was in that stasis in at work identifying as a cross-dresser 
using my dead name, dead pronouns, and the restroom, the men's restroom for at least a year, if not closer to two. Oh, wow. And then um, I did both at the same time. I changed the name to Emily. They did it really quickly. It was wonderful. I had an email within a couple hours um, you know, that, that had my new name on it and was welcomed with open arms into the women's restroom. And it was, it was wonderful. Um, but even with that, that was like, at that point I was like, I might be trans. (laughs) And, um, so, uh, yeah, so that, I think, I think I, I think when I came out, it was to answer the, the previous question a little bit more accurately, I think it was December of 2016. And then, um, uh, yeah, it was, it was 2019 towards the end when I started to be like, okay, the, the egg, the egg is cracked. I held on to every single piece of the egg I could, even though it was, it was falling away as long as I could. And then in 2019, I just couldn't deny it anymore and just had to to immerse myself in the community and start finding people and, and start trying to really figure out what this is. And it was about that time. There was, there was one period um, and I forget exactly where it was in the timeline. It was a, a really crucial moment for me. I just told myself, okay, I'm going to, uh, we're going to give this a year. And in that year, I'm not going to ask any questions you know, I'm not, I'm not going to ask any questions about like what this is or why, or any of those sorts of things. I'm just going to let it be what it is. I'm going to do what feels good and I'm going to explore and just let myself be. And, um, that was, that was the most important thing that I did is just allow myself to explore this without worrying about what it was, without worrying about what yeah. it meant for, for anything. I just gave my, this, myself that permission to explore for a year and that helped a lot. Wow. Love it. Um, one of the things that I did want to like kind of highlight, because I know it's, this is something that happened to me, is you were mentioned that like every little step you were like questioning. Like, I know for me, essentially, like when I first started wearing like nail polish before I even started dressing in women's clothing, like I remember going out and, and being like terrified that we're going to be judging that and then wearing like women's jeans. And I was like, this is like every little step was like, that pushing that little boundary and i i know a lot of people like i was talking to somebody the other day and they were talking about maybe just wearing like tighter jeans and they're like i'm terrified to do this and it's like dude like it's fine you know honestly you do it one time and if every time you do it you feel a little bit better now i go out looking like a slut and it's awesome <laughs> <laughs> I, <Let> it go. <laughs> I just remember being paranoid to go anywhere even if that anywhere is Walmart, like we've all seen the people of Walmart videos and some of the <laughs> yeah. wacky ass shit that goes on in Walmart, pardon my French. But you know, like I was so afraid to be like wearing skinny jeans and a t-shirt inside Walmart. And I'm sitting here, I'm like, dude, you're stupid. Like nowadays I'm sitting here, I'm like, that was so dumb. Did any but- of y'all do do this one? This is the one where um, looking back, I'm like, of course you were trans. Like, of course this was something else because I got into buying women's clothes in sizes that were uh, were ridiculously big. Like there were like six sizes <clears throat> too big so that they fit like men's clothes. So I could still pass with and 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 be um you know and, and be stealth about it, but wearing women's clothes. And that was another one of those things later where I look back. And I, when I was trying to figure everything out and decide if I really was trans, I'm like, well, does that make any sense? Like, it was so important <laughs> that they were women's clothes, that you wore mm-hmm. them in a way that did not look flattering or feminine in any way. And yet it was, and yet it felt good to you that it was women's clothes. And, and that was the key to it. Like, that doesn't make any sense other than to answer that, yes, you're trans, you know, because you want to wear the clothes that fit who you are inside. Um, you know, it was a, it was, it was a weird thing. I never had that experience, but my big thing, um, (laughs) and it's stupid, but my big thing was I would go to Walmart because Walmart was like my OG, like that's (laughs) where I lived. Um, 
I would go to Walmart and I would get a basket, not a cart, but a basket. And I would fill it up with like two or three clothing items that I wanted, right? And then I would get a like hat out of the dude section and I would put it on top. I yep. didn't need the hat. I bought yeah. the hat. I didn't need the hat. But I was, at least when I'm, I was but always at least getting stuff from my girlfriend. My girlfriend and then I'm walking the down the aisle. No one can see what's underneath the hat, right? Mm-hmm. At least that's what I'm telling myself. Yeah, for no, that was it that's chips. it exactly. <laughs> well, yeah, that like, was it exactly. And um, uh, I, first off, I'm going to tell everybody how old I am. My OG was Mervin's. So that was that. That's where that's how wow. far back I go. Um, I don't even know. But I, I got know yeah right. I got um, big into uh, Coles and uh, Coles and J.C. Penney were my big two with Macy's as a as a close <laughs> third. Um, and I have a, a whole lot of 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 just sentimental, just sentiment, um, nostalgia to the Thousand Oaks Mall. The the jc penny and the macy's there and then the coals that's close by like that that was where so much of it happened uh so many memories <laughs> but enough. uh you, you know my my thing i got into uh jc penny i would go there and i when i was getting to this point of allowing myself to finally explore this and do these things i went way overboard like it was, it was, it was extremely manic that the pendulum swung so far that I would go through and I would load women's clothes on my, um, on my arm, on my, my left arm. I didn't have a cart or a basket. I would just, you know, Oh, that, that top is cute there. Ooh, a dress. Ooh, that's very exciting. And then whatever. And, um, load my arm up to the point where it hurt, like it was burning yep. and then find now i was on the the there was a women's floor and the men's floor so i couldn't really at that point do the thing that i usually did which was to cover it with something that was men's you know same same exact trick um but i would find something something generic androgynous enough something that that wasn't obvious and throw it over the top then i would go downstairs and go to they actually had a suit section that was in the back corner and there was a dressing room there that no one was ever anywhere near. And so I went in and I would, I would, um, you know, uh, try on all my clothes. And like I said, I, I had a, a whole load of them. And then the, just the, the funny thing, I was so terrified of being found out, you know, even the, the little, the little possibilities that I would not put the clothes that I didn't buy. I didn't want to, didn't want to buy um there in the dressing room or on the rack outside i would take them all the way back upstairs and put away each individual one or find a women's uh rack a women's uh, go back rack and put them there like but for the most part i would take every single thing back to where i had found it because i could not leave any breadcrumbs of evidence Wow. I so I actually actually just... did do the thing that you're talking about with the uh, buying the different clothes that were oversized and shit. Mm-hmm. Um, except it's uh, it's I it's it, mm-hmm. it, it was all Andro stuff, and this was like October, November, December last year. Um, but as long as it said women's on it, like your your Mervins is to my Amazon, right? So <laughs> <laughs> that just things showing up on the front porch. But um, that's when I started showing up to work uh, in all these this Andro stuff, and um, that eventually led to where we are now. But um, that's real quick. None of y'all know this, but how I came out at work was a very slow burn. It wasn't like an immediate thing. I changed my um, my email signature from uh, from my from one day it was my dead name to just B. And then it was, uh, oh, I started yeah. putting my pronouns in there. It went from be, uh, he, them to be, uh, they, them. And then it switched over to Brie, she, them, and then Brianna, she, her. And that took like four months to do. Oh, and I basically yeah. confused the shit out of everybody <laughs> for so long. My like, you're like, where Just, does my- it end? <laughs> so now I'm getting curious as we're talking about names and coming out at work and da 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 I'm curious. 
did anyone here in this in this room here did anyone pilot a different name or were you all just like dead set when when i first came out actually when i first came out in 2016 so i came out in 2016 and for about a month and then went back in the closet but i was gonna be emily so uh -huh. oh, yeah I didn't do anything publicly. I've only had a few in the back of my head. Um, this, I wanted to stay. And in the end, I kind of made the decision to like stay close to my original, you know, roll off what? the tongue name a what little was, bit. What, what was, what was in the, what was in the, what else did we have? I'm just curious. I'm being nosy. I, I love, I love it. I'll tell you if uh, you don't laugh as hard as you want to, but you can laugh still. Um, Willa. <clears throat> Yeah, Willa or Thea? Willa? Thea? I, could, mm -hmm. I could see Thea. Oh, I know it's Thea. Oh, yeah. Fun. Emily, how yeah, about but you? It was, it was so far off. I, th I thought in my head it would just weird out my family even more, which, again, was that irrational fear of things. But, you know, whatever. I love that. <laughs> but, the, you know, I always say that there's something really sweet and nice about a name that still pays homage to the, the name that they gave you and still, you know, ties into that to, you know, include your family in a way. Yeah, I mean, mine two are yeah. actually the, so similar. You're sorry. <laughs> You're sorry. Um, yeah, I I thought about um, a the, the feminized version of of my name, and I I it it just never seemed it never seemed right. Um, when I tried out Emily and I started using it, I liked the name, but then um, I wouldn't say it, it felt like it fit. It it felt pretty alien for a while, but it um it it really did. It really did seem to to fit well, and I, I'm in that I liked it, and other people said that it fit me well. So I'm like, okay, good, good, good. I just Thanks. went through the the list of names that I really liked, of like Michelle or um, uh, Stephanie. Uh, uh, you know, I, I had a I had a good list, but all of those names at that time, I knew somebody named that or, or, or you yeah. know, or, yep. you know, like, like somebody's daughter was that. And I'm like, I can't, I can't name myself after somebody else or their dog. So I, I had this, this long list. And then I just crossed off all the ones that, um, you know, that I knew somebody or it would, it would seem a little weird. And Emily was the winner. I when love I picked, that. When I picked Danielle, I actually knew a Danielle and I, for some reason, apologized to her. I said, hey, I'm using this. <laughs> and um, I had to pick a D because like I have DHB written on everything. And so I had to pick a D. And my, my family, my mom's name is Holly. So uh, my middle name is Holly now. Mm -hmm. So that, play, that, that played well with the H. My dad's first name was David. So that's where I got that. So I was like, you know what? Let's go with take my dad's first name and now take my mom's first name. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I, um, I feminized my, my middle name. You know, and I because uh -huh. Emily Michelle works really well. I like it. That's beautiful. Yes. I love it. I I tried going similar to my old name. Um, I was gonna go with Brittany. Um, I could and see it's, you Brittany. Oh my god, it's Brittany, bitch. <laughs> Yo, like a small piece of me regrets that decision. Um, just because of that line, like that tagline would have been perfect. Right. Um, but honestly, for me, having the names be so similar for me, I don't know why, but that caused me to like feel dysphoric about it. Mm -hmm. Like hearing, hearing the short name for Brittany, Brit, which is generally what I went with, sounded so close to my old name. I just couldn't do it. I could not mm -hmm. take it. Um, so I pivoted. And I went with Alexa, Lexi for short. But here's the problem is when I imagine Lexi in my head, she's long blonde hair and a size zero. Yeah. Me, myself at the time was six foot, 250 pounds and brunette. Like just did not match what I pictured in my head. Mm -hmm. Now I'm closer, <laughs> but <laughs> it just didn't match what I had in my head. And so I got thinking and my parents had often told me if you were born female, if you were born a girl, your name was going to be Rachel. And I'm sitting here. I'm like, ka-ching. <laughs> so 
I took it. And when I changed my name at the doctor's office, I walked in and Dr. Pendleton, bless his little baby soul. I love him. He walks in, he goes, I hear we changed our name to Rachel. And I was like, yep. And he goes, I got to tell you, it suits you. And I'm sitting here, I'm like, yay. Shut up, Doc. I'm already in love with you. Come on. I (laughs) am, though, like, sorry. Was this the same one that you touched his knee and everything wasn't the same again? All (laughs) Pindy. Dr. Pindy. Oh, that's funny. Uh, it's, it, it, the, the one thing that's kind of funny, and it's it's disappointing that Rachel, that you didn't try out Brianna for a while because um, Danny um, was considering Emily. Um, em, uh, Rachel would have been the feminization of of my of my name, but the sort of close feminization of of my name. So um, it would have made a nice little nice little loop there. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, go ahead. Sorry, Brie. Sorry, before we get too far away from it, I, I I think there's something that needs a little clarification um, <laughs> about the transverse. Am, am Which I we counting, haven't even mentioned yet. Yeah. I, am I counting this right? There are six parts to it. Uh, you know what? Honestly, at this point, I don't even know how many parts there are. Um, we, we had a little bit of a, a falling apart um, and I'm still trying to rebuild. So um yeah, depending on the day, I'm I'm more clear or more confused. So, <laughs> what okay. are the six parts that you have uh, that you see there? Uh, we have the transistance, keep uh, keep living, all on the table, behind open doors, and then this mm. little one with two swords. <clears throat> oh, so, um, the the timeline that we didn't dive into when you asked that question was um, I started the transgender show, did that for about six months. And then I had some people uh, start to approach me. They were like, I really like what you're doing and I want to help. Um, one person in particular really pushed me to form a company and, and make it into something because I had this aspiration of making it into a, a media network featuring a lot of trans creators and doing different things. So the, the transgender show, and we would have some others that featured, um, information and sort of help for trans people, but then a lot of other things that just happen to have a trans person in in it doing cool things to help normalize that would have um, a broader appeal. So that was the, that was the basic premise there. And so we started, um, you know, so the, the transgender show Valkyries, the one with the two swords was Mm -hmm. one of the other early ones um, from Megan Bounds stream. Um, I had gotten in with her mods and we, started playing Fortnite. We had our, our crew and um, we were playing Fortnite every week and we'd do that on stream. And then you mentioned um, Behind Open Doors, which um, one of my main partners in starting the the company did that one. It was a sex and intimacy show, um, another inter- interview show, but about sex and relationships and intimacy and all that kind of stuff. And then um, uh, Transistence, our news show, All on the Table, which we've actually spun off into its own thing now because it was too much um, for me to oversee at the point where I'm at right now. Um, Jen Giggles is running that and um, they have their own Twitch channel now. That's our tabletop gaming um our tabletop gaming monster. Now they've got a, a whole bunch of shows and stuff that they're doing. It's great. Um, so yeah, it just, there, there were a lot of different properties that we came up with a bunch of different shows and they've really ebbed and flowed. Keep living was wonderful. That's a, a black non-binary creator who um, uh, was with us for a little while and then uh, had, had to move a bunch of life changes happened and, you know, life happens. So um, we, we, we officially started, as a company, a three-person partnership in January of 2021. And then by the end of that year, we had to dissolve that because one of the partners left. And since then, it's sort of been a slow a slow burn, a slow decline um, as um, we kind of sh- scrambled to try and keep things together and keep things moving forward. But um uh, basically, yeah, uh, without going too deep into it, where I'm at now is I'm, I'm sort of doing it a, a bit solo. I've got some support. I've got, um, our IT person in Australia, who's taken the, uh, community community center. We have a large discord. Um, she took that and has rebranded it and is running that on her own. So, um, 
a lot of the pieces are still there, but as far as them being directly under the transverse now, um, it's been something that I haven't been able to to wrestle with because, you know, you lose you lose five or six people in the span of a couple months. And um, I don't know how, how y'all would react, but um, it sent me into a pretty deep depression. And I've been um, struggling to come out of that and keep everything going and keep positive. But um, yeah, it, it's hit me personally very hard. And um, I still believe that transverse can be everything that I, I'd hoped it would be, which was just basically everything that trans people need. Um, but uh, I'm at a point right now where I'm a little bit further from achieving that goal than I would I would like to be. Gotcha. And um, <clears throat> you don't have to go into it if you don't want to, but uh, a certain guest of ours you worked with for quite some time, correct? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about more than Mimi, uh, Minnesota yes. Mimi now? Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Everybody... Uh, there was a period where it sort of shifted, but for the for the first two years, everybody that was part of the transverse was somebody I had interviewed. Um, you, you know, you come on the transgender show and then, uh, you know, we just had a really good time, built a good rapport um, and, you know, wanted to come on. And so we would do, you know, figure out where to put you and, and get you started. And um, Michelle has a uh, Michelle who goes by Mimi also has a television production background and editing background. And so I'm like, okay, I was at the point right then where I needed to step up higher and focus more on the business than the media stuff. Cause I was really mm -hmm. entrenched in the media and coming up with these new shows and getting people and, and doing that whole thing. And I, I, I envisioned passing that off to Michelle and having her be the, the uh, director of media. And then I would, you know, step up and just do more overseeing managerial stuff. And, um, you know, we did, we did some, some good things for a while. And then with an organization that we, we did not crack the code for bringing in money. And we started as a, as a for-profit partnership, which would sort of fell apart. And the next step was, okay, we need to make this, the next decision was we, we need this to be a nonprofit and we need to bring in grants and, and things for the different things that we're doing. And, with just subsequent stumbling blocks, it was just something we were never able to accomplish. And so we've never been um, actually funded. We've, we've, we've got some community money coming in. We've got some great Patreon supporters and things like that. But um, without having legit funding and really paying people, they can't stay around very long. At some point, they have to go get a, a, a day job or they have to cut back the involvement so much that, um, you know, they're just they're they're not very they're not able to put a bunch of time into it. And Michelle has been so busy with the job that she took um, that she hasn't been able to really help in in several months. And we're excited that she's on the verge of being able to come back and help us in a big way. But um, yeah, she was one of the ones that that uh, we essentially lost in that in that period. So gotcha. This was nice. <laughs> Like one of the things that I wanted to uh, to ask, and this is, I guess, kind of um, related to the, I mean, to the transverse, um, with the amount of, I guess, notoriety that the transverse is getting, do you find that you become, you personally have become like a target of any of these right wing like groups? I know with a lot of, I feel like a lot of people once you become more visible, you just kind of they become a bigger and bigger target for people who want to you know, who need a scapegoat, who want to, they want to hate on trans people. So why not go to the transverse target, target you? Um, mm -hmm. I feel like you're not, I mean, nothing that you're doing is so just like out there, like, like forcing it on people. It's like, here's resources for the people in the community, as opposed to, you know, here's how we militarize trans people and take over cis life. Um, <laughs> are you finding that you're getting, uh, the kind of like negative notoriety that I feel like a lot of people get when you, when you start getting more and more uh, visible. No. And I think, I think there's multiple reasons for that. One, we haven't reached a whole, a, 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 a big notoriety. We haven't gotten a, enough momentum behind us um, within the community. We're fairly well known, but outside, we just haven't hit anything yet. That was, I, I, I sort of chuckled to myself when you were asking that question, because that was one of the things I, I told the partners early on was that 
this that would be the thing that will rocket us to the level we need to be to get to you know get in front of the eyeballs is we need to get some major right wing group pissed off at us we need like the million moms <laughs> or somebody to come after us hard and that will be the thing that that puts us on the map and you know fortunately and unfortunately that hasn't happened yet um Yet. And so, I mean, I haven't even, I haven't even be, been able to get onto uh, Matt Walsh's radar. And I, I specifically put out a promo for one of my guests, um, calling him out and calling him a liar. And and then on my new show, I've, I've said it a few times, but uh, I think we're just, we're just two small potatoes still. And, and that's a bummer, but that's also a really good thing because we're able to help a lot of people and keep them safe. So but... when we, um, when we, we, started there and there were three partners that were that started the corporation um, one was in charge of business i was in charge of the media and then the other one was in charge of the community and we built a discord community from the 80 people that i had at that point up to i think it's about 1400 right now and we were able to build it slowly and keep it safe the whole time and build in the tools to keep it really safe and make sure that everybody in there is either good, you know, good people, good people from the community, allies, or if they're a bad actor, they're caught very quickly, they're out, and um, they're not able to to cause a lot of damage. Were you seeing a lot of bad actors coming in? Uh, yeah, yeah, we, you, 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 you got a, you definitely would get a bunch, um, you know, and that's why, um, it was wonderful. We were partnered with, um, oh my God, I'm blanking completely on Isabel's original pride shield. We, uh, had partnered with, um, Isabel, who was a, a British girl who I had interviewed and she had this thing that was, um, protecting discord servers and she, folded that up and we took up that mantle and in, in a week rosa the person who's in charge of our discord discord community um built aegis which was our um our security our um blanking on the word um but yeah it, it would just provided security for what? discord communities and the way that that real quick, just the, the way that it works, I'm on a roll here. Um, if you ban somebody on your discord server, if you're part of Aegis, you ban somebody on your discord server, you send into Aegis um, all of their information and why you ban them. And then every every week we send out a report of who was banned and why. And then you balance that against your terms of service and decide if that's a bannable offense on your server or not. And if it is, if it rises to that level, then you can preemptively ban them before they even get to your server. And um, she was able to work it in where um, not only are we protecting LGBT Discord servers, but also LGBT Twitch streamers as well. So we expanded it, and um, you know that that's been a great thing to not only keep our server safe, but keep the other servers in the community safe. Wow! And amazing. As as far as not getting hate from the right wing side of things i guess the way i look at it generally unless you're doing something asinine it's pretty easy to do you know what i mean like i just think back to there was a decent trans creator who didn't get any hate didn't get a lot of hate until recently when the top came off at the White House and then she got a bunch of it because we did something that was asinine. Mm -hmm. I don't know. My my two cents on it. like, Or if it involves minors because that'll get the right wings. Yeah. Well, that, that's it's been a tough one too and we've, we've unfortunately um, stayed stayed kind of out of the, the, the um, underage the conversation entirely uh, discord mm -hmm. is 13 plus and we do allow young people in but it's 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 very monitored and and um regulated and, and they you know they don't have access to um to much of the server and um so we, we've primarily stayed 18 plus for our content and for the people that we we cater to on our server i do i love that i think that's very smart i think that's a great 
business decision. And I mean, it sucks, but at the same point, you have to guard yourself. And mm-hmm. I think that's that's smart. It was really strange. Uh, it was a, it was a really not strange. It was a very educational experience to go through building a community online where you're trying to keep people safe, and it's it's a community that is so targeted, and there's and the, it's it's so targeted, and from that, it's it's so traumatized. Everybody in the trans community has been through some kind of trauma. And like you saw in my story, I didn't experience a lot of it out externally, but internally I was traumatized to hell and back because I did it to myself. Um, so we all come from some point of, of, of trauma, unless I, I, I guess there's the rare exception to that. I guess we can't, you know, say blanket statements, but for the most part, there is trauma involved in everybody's experience in the trans community. So, when you get people together, the larger the community gets, the more problems there are within the community. And when you're trying to provide a safe space for everyone, but also include everyone, and we hate gatekeeping, we're we're very much against gatekeeping. And so we have a lot of different people with a lot of different perspectives, a lot of different needs, and 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 those those different trauma points. And so moderating that keeping everybody being civil keeping the conversation good and light and 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 making sure that people are having the conversations in the rooms where it's appropriate holy crap is that a lot of work (laughs) yeah yeah i can (laughs) i can only imagine i mean most my as far as like trans groups most of what i see is in um Facebook like I don't I honestly never got into discord like that never was my thing I tried bless my soul I tried it just was not my thing um but I will never never it never ceases to amaze me when I'm in just like a trans support group on Facebook and the next thing you know there's someone's grandma taking their clothes off and posting pictures and I'm like not the space grandma like <laughs> move, moved out to a different group like not the space that's another know. problem right is the trans community is very thirsty yeah oh my god <laughs> 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 Truest thing I've heard in wow. months. <laughs> yes. Um, Not <laughs> us. Never. Um, no. no. <laughs> Before we get too <laughs> far away from it, one of the things you, you were talking about uh, trauma. Uh, one of the things that we had talked about when we were first uh, setting up this, you know, we were preparing for this inner or before we started, you'd mentioned uh, some suicidal thoughts, ideations. Uh, when you're talking about trauma, I feel like we've all kind of been to that point. I know with me, I've gotten to the point of ideation and actually planning out. I got to the point where I was planning out, like, what's the best day to do it where it's not going to affect my kid? And it turned out it's a Saturday. So, yeah. Do um, you mind, like, I know you said that you don't mind digging into that. Is that something that you uh, you could tell us a little bit about? Oh, yeah. Um again, like keep in mind my, my story of coming out and how long it took me once I was out to understand that I was trans. Like, um, I, I didn't conceive of it so long. The only thing that I thought for most of my life was that there was something wrong with me. I did not fit into the world and I had no idea why I had this, this kink that sort of started to show up as I got, um, you know, a, a puberty age, probably about, you know, 11, 12, 13 was when this thing started to come come out. And I was ashamed of it, you know, like sneaking my mom's clothes out of the hamper and, and, and stuff. And it was, it, it was just very, very shameful. And the only, the only thing I had a grasp on was that I was some kind of deviant. And this was, um, this was fetish. There was, it was only negativity. There was no understanding of of being trans or that being trans or a cross-dresser or some other kind of identity or whatever was okay. Um, The only thought I had in my mind was that there was something very wrong with me. And 
Same. You know, you you're you're in life. You're you've got to you've got to deal with it. So I just kind of kept trying to go through, kept trying to fit in, trying to figure out how to be a a guy, trying to understand why it was that that guys thought and acted the way they did a lot of times. Like some of it, some of it kind of came natural to me, to me, but then other stuff just didn't make any sense. How, especially once we got into high school, like how um, guys talked about girls and how they looked at girls. And it's like, okay, I can look and see she's pretty and I, I want to get to know her and I want to connect with her on an emotional level, but the, I want to F that or like all of these, the <laughs> crass things that was just so much like, why do I not understand that? Why am I, why do I not fit with that at all? And um, like I said, it all just, it always turned back until way, way late in my life that there was just something wrong with me. And you don't have to think that very many times and hit into situations where you get depressed for other things. Maybe some things aren't going right to where you'll, you'll turn to that, um, to that ideation as the way out. Like um, I don't belong here the world won't miss me. I'm, I, I, I don't fit. And, um, yeah, just basically I shouldn't be here. Did, did you have a beard? I know for me, it was working out. Like I told myself if I keep working out, uh, I'm going to be, I'm going to eventually like this body. And so I started working out doing pushups every day. Hey, Rachel. <laughs> I know, <laughs> you know, that's where my mind went. <laughs> um, basically, yeah, like I was, I got to the point where it's like I was doing, I was working out every day too, you know, too exhausted, like hurting myself because I was like, so one of these days I'm going to like this body. And the more I did it, the less I liked it. Um, did you have any, were you doing anything like that? Like, you know, growing an actual beard, uh, like doing things that, that you thought were like manly that you should be doing? Um, sorry, I didn't I just, mean, to, I didn't mean to, to, uh, segue, but no, no, that, no, that's great. And, and it is tied in. Um, it's, it's tied in very, very directly. Um, I, I just tried to kind of toughen myself up and, and prove to my friends that I was, I was tough and, and a little crazy. Um, I, um, got into a thing where I would just basically punch everything. Um, I was desensitizing my, my fist so I could, you know, um, my, my school featured a lot of I beam girders in in the the design. It was very much like a prison. Um, but I'd go around uh, punching those and um, you know hitting my head on things and just doing um, whatever I could to cause myself pain, but then also prove to others that I could take pain and um, and and that sort of thing. That was that was a big thing I got into, and um, sort of related to you know, along that, that same vein. Um, I, I had a girlfriend. Um, I finally got a girlfriend late in high school and, um, I don't know, there was, th that's when things started to, to sort of, there was a little bit of an unraveling there. Um, and I, I, I felt like a lack of dedication to her, but that I should be dedicated to her. Like I should be like all in on this or whatever. And so I actually took a push pen and I carved her name into my arm. Um, and you know, not, not, a, not a razor, not something that was quick. It was something that was very slow, deliberately, very painful. Um, and, uh, I ended up wearing a hoodie, a black hoodie. Cause that was all I had in, uh, throughout the summer in Southern California, because I had to, to cover that up and not let anybody see that. But, um, those those were the sort of things at that period. And that was my first bout with the the, the suicidal ideation and, and just absolutely hating myself. And um, so, yeah, to to mask what was wrong with me and try and sort of play it off. There was a lot of there was a lot of that kind of pseudo toughness. And that resonates so much with me, like. We did it very different ways, but for me, like it was more internal. Like I had to constantly prove to myself just how masculine I was. And when I got comfortable at this level, we needed to go up. And when I got comfortable here, we had to go up and up. And I don't know, it's scary. Like it really is. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. anytime you've got something like that that you're not dealing with that you don't understand about yourself and you're not able to discuss or 
think about like it was all shove it away like it's bad shove it away anytime you're doing that it's just going to build to something nasty because you have those emotions they're there they have to come out and express themselves in some way and the more you ignore them the more you fight them the worse they manifest and i feel so, like like well, just like with addiction i know that like a lot of the the trans women that i know have suffered at least some point of their life i know with, for me I, I even until recently drinking has been a big um point of contention for those who are interested this is non-alcoholic boom um, i was gonna ask you yeah I've, I've been doing a shit ton of the booch um i'm a boochie hoochie <laughs> <laughs> Um, but you know, we're actually going to do an episode on, on addiction because, uh, I know I was, I've, I've been a pretty heavy alcoholic, but that was my way of dealing with it and hurting myself because I realized if I could drink myself to death, then it would be painful, but it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be putting a gun to my head or, you know, jumping off a bridge, which seemed like, you know, yeah, just sort of, uh, terrifying you know i feel like drinking yourself to death is a slow um yeah. slow process um yeah. i resonate is. with that a lot too um i never attempted suicide because i never thought that i would attempt su suicide i never thought that it would be an attempt i would do it in a way that it's i succeeded yeah well, and so it was it was an absolute i had to be sure that this was the thing that i was going to do because i wasn't going to do a bunch of pills or whatever i wasn't going to do anything that had any kind of way out like it was a golden gate bridge sort of a thing or or nothing um yeah. um i guess for anybody listening on um on listening to the podcast especially if it's like an ally one of the things that i've kind of told myself is if somebody tells you that they're you know suicidal believe them but the thing is, I knew that for me, I would, I wasn't going to tell anybody. I was just going to do it. I feel like telling people is a cry for help, but I was just, so if, if, if you're suspicious of somebody, but they haven't told you, definitely there's a, there's a possibility that they are just kind of in that I'm going to do this, but I'm not going to tell anybody because I don't want someone to stop me. That's um, very true. So, I would not have, I, my parents actually even got me to a therapist at that time and I would not tell them anything. I lied up one side and down the other. Like I, I, I didn't let anything slip. Um, and, and that, that's a really good point. Like some of the people that are the closest to actually doing it are the ones that are going to talk the least about it. Yeah. So if, if anybody listening, if you have suspicions, follow up because you never know. I mean, it's better to ask and, you know, it's better to. I don't know. I, I I wouldn't even know how to go about doing that. But uh, if you you know, yeah, like you said, the the people who are closest to it, or the ones who are who are actually planning on it, uh, probably won't tell you because they don't want you to stop them. So. And I am going to pivot because Emily kind of went right where I was going. But I'm sorry, um, Rachel, to to cut you off there. Before we go there, can we just talk about the 988 helpline and how important that is that everybody remember that that's there yeah. now? That's something that we didn't have when we were kids. We didn't, you know, know the, what help was there. Um, right now, if you're listening to this podcast, if you're watching whatever you're doing, put it in your phone, save it in your phone as a thing, put it in there very intentionally and do it now. You may not need it now. You may not ever need it, but that's not the point. The point is that if you take it and you put it in your phone and you're very intentional about it, when if you ever get to that situation again, you'll you'll know in the back of your mind that that's there. You'll know that you have that resource and hopefully that will help you. So yes, 988, you can text it. You can call it any day, time or whatever. And it um, um, they're, they're there for you. Don't let yourself go through this alone because we've been there it's terrible it's not worth it you're more important than that and um if you take this one little step right now of putting it in your phone and having it there it i i, I really hope and i really believe it will it will make a difference for you at some point yeah and and i mean and obviously anybody listening to this i know we all all three of us seem like we have it all together yeah, we, I mean, all, all, all four of us, uh, Emily definitely does. I know Bree, Rachel, and I are kind of meandering our way through this life. Um, but yeah, we've all been there. It does get better. If you're having ideations of that stuff, please seek help. Um, I'm going to put it, we're going to put it right 
here and I'm going to do a graphic. It's going to be awesome. Uh, I put a lap in here so I know exactly what time to look for. Um, thank you, Emily. That's perfect. Yeah. That is. We'll also put it in the description down below too. Down there. Um, mm -hmm. In the top corner. And on that point, we've all kind of alluded to it. So I'll just, I'm going to just say it up front. Therapy is awesome. Like, mm -hmm. if, if, Honestly, like there's even even just transitioning, there's a lot that goes into it. There's so much emotionally, mentally, physically. Don't 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 steer away from therapy. Don't stigmatize it. Like therapy's awesome. I probably wouldn't be who I am without my therapist. Mm -hmm. Um, so I mean, just don't don't steer away from it just because it's something that you don't think you need like it's it's something that you know that's what that's what we need to do that's what babies do like therapies therapy can be healthy therapy can be awesome it yeah, can it i'm a yeah. very firm believer that everybody needs therapy and it's not just us and where we are every it's it benefits everybody just even if it's I talking to somebody that is not involved in your uh -huh. own shit like just getting it all out there on the table to somebody that is that not that they don't matter, but the term not involved is very important mm -hmm. when it comes to therapy. Yeah. I think I've, I've told my parents this on a number of occasions. Um, cause we talk about everything, but I feel like every single person trans, not trans old, young, everyone could benefit from therapy in one way or another. Yeah, absolutely. Do mm -hmm. not do what I did. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> talk, <right. laughs> talk to a therapist. Um, yeah. Uh, and one thing that I, I've found a lot in interviewing a, a ton of people is is uh, transition doesn't doesn't solve the things. Um, it makes us feel a lot better about ourselves. It, it it's a much better life um, living as your true authentic self. But there are a ton of things that it doesn't solve because there are a ton of things about you that are not related to the fact that you're trans. And when you're worried about coming out and all of that, it all sort of like accumulates together. And you, you, I think a lot of times we have this in our brain that coming out and transitioning will solve all the problems. And then if I, I feel that that's a that's a big danger for for mm -hmm. young or or closet trans folks who are looking to transition. Um, that that this is going to be a panacea that's going to fix everything. And then once you do transition and it doesn't fix all the things, you still do have some problems, some some issues, dysphoria, different different things. The problem is is that you'll think you you could potentially think um, I'm doing something wrong. This isn't right for me or whatever. And it's and that's not the case. It's just there's a lot of other things going on, and that's why therapy is wonderful. Right, transitioning doesn't fix you. It just opens new doors to new problems. Uh, not not saying that in a bad way, but there there are a host of new issues <laughs> there that are get presented to you. And, yes. um, you know, new of, hurdles to jump over that are just so strange. <laughs> yeah, Endless. Of, yeah. They're, they're just new challenges that you never could have seen coming. What now? <laughs> I always and, say like I traded society wanting me to kill myself. So I didn't want to kill myself. So like, you know, transitioning society, society doesn't I mean like in the media, society seems to not like me as much as they like a cis white guy but i like me a lot better than i like being a cis white guy so mm -hmm. um, and that's what matters yeah and um yeah that oh, that's fantastic um i i i'm, I'm looking at the the time and I, I wanted to make sure that we got in some of the the more lighthearted questions for those those people who really love our silliness uh, uh, it's been a bit it's been a bit deep yeah yeah one of the questions say, let's lighten the mood <laughs> what, I had this, this really off the cuff question that i definitely did not prep you for at all um, <laughs> and i totally but, have an answer for but I, I, uh, well you don't even know what the question is uh, <laughs> no, no but that's that's how good i am <laughs> After all of these interviews that I've done and things like this, I think on my feet like that. Like it's Emily, get out of my head. Stop. Mine like a steel trap. <laughs> hey, uh, Emily, what is your transition theme song? 
Wow, what an interesting question. Oh, I mean, geez. honestly, anybody who's watched at least one episode of the podcast is going to know we're going to ask this question, so. <laughs> and I, I, love, I love how you said it in, like, the most Bob Barker tone. Yeah. What is? Come what on is down. Really what fun? is your transition theme song? <laughs> and while you're at it, what's your transition movie? <laughs> oh, yeah. We need that one, too, actually. Yeah. On the spot. Bam. You know, um, again, going back to the fact that I, I pushed back so hard and I was so far from away from understanding the fact that I was trans that I didn't like I didn't allow myself really to ever get into listening to um, female artists and, and, and pop stuff like I've always been a, a, a hard rock girl. Um, and since, <laughs> you, you know, starting starting to understand yourself and starting to allow yourself to transition and, and do these new things and explore things, it really opens up a lot where you're like, oh, I can I can do this now and I can I'll let myself try that. Um, and so that's wonderful. So I've gotten into um, some Taylor Swift. I love me. Um, yeah. Shake it off. Um, <laughs> another one that I found because of uh, Beat Saber on the Oculus was uh, KDA's Pop Stars which um, I think might be the one I'm going to go with, um, but also through my friends, the Valkyries and the fact that we were playing, uh, we were playing Fortnite every week. They released a, um, oh my God, my brain today, um, Dua Lipa song as a, as an emote in there. And I, and a couple of us really fell in love with that. And I still um, love that one. And uh uh, it was it was her her biggest hit, and I'm trying to think of what the the heck the name of it is. Not not the not the one that she did with uh, the the uh, where she like it, it was like a rip off of like a I don't know Madonna song or something or no is it is it Don't Start Now? It is Don't Start Now. I just okay. I just found it. Yeah yeah. <laughs> I was like I can sing it. That's gonna that's gonna go poorly. Um and I'm gonna be horribly embarrassing. Oh, so I'm glad that we found it. But well, you yeah, can give yeah. us a little bit, a little taste. No, nope, no, no. Uh, no. no. <laughs> uh, I did want to say you have a fantastic voice. Your voice. I mean, as you can tell, I have a. Ve- I have not been working on mine very much. Uh, but your voice <laughs> is you're very. Very and, voice. and see, I, I don't understand that. Like, that's something I, I hear that a lot. And I just do not hear it in my own voice. Now, granted, I'm I'm very conscious of it. So I'm I'm able to keep it up um, higher than uh, it drops sometimes. But still, even at this level right now, I do not hear feminine voice. I hear pretty masked, pretty like a pretty obvious one and so um it still shocks me when i hear people say that my my voice sounds feminine or or is passable it's like again it's just not something that can be in my brain i'm still (laughs) i still need to talk to my therapist (laughs) oh honey um, well it is you got it (laughs) so you mentioned taylor swift did anyone else did anyone else hear that she's dating travis kelsey i'm sorry old news i'm sorry that's been used way too many times that it's had to um but i got a question you said that your voice sometimes you can feel like that it drops do you and i don't mean a sexual innuendo when i say this i'm looking at you too (laughs) um but do you feel that it's harder to get it up in the morning Like, um, yeah, I'm, I'm very, very grateful for the fact that I don't have any, that I, I don't, I don't immediately jump into a situation where my voice matters. Um, uh, because that would be rough. Yeah. There, there is a fair bit of dysphoria that, that it is, it is very deep in first thing in the morning. Um, and, uh, you know, I still do this thing where like, uh, grunt or complain about something or whatever. Um, definitely if I'm, if I'm upset and usually in the morning, you know, I'm, I'm a bit of a bear in the morning. Um, it's coming from a grumpier place and then it just sort of naturally is, is dropped because of that. And it's one of those where as soon as I open my mouth, it's instant dysphoria. Oh yeah. Like, so, yeah, I totally, it's like, like, I'm like, I don't oh, be so great. Fuck you. Stop driving like that. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I don't, I don't, under, I don't understand it. When I worked in retail sales, I normally didn't get to work until about ten a.m. Now I work in banking, where I get to work at eight thirty in the morning. And let me tell you, that first like hour and a half, my voice is like an octave lower, and I just can't. 
grasp how to get it to where I'm comfortable with in in that early morning hour. And so I'm sitting here, I'm like, is this like, is this just me? Is like, is this a mental thing or do other people go through this too? So I, I I'm think glad it's, that we're kind of in that same boat. <laughs> I think it's very common. And I think uh, on your way into work, you got to work on your vocal exercises and really warm up like you're like you're a singer. <laughs> I think oh, I yeah. have to. I, the The issue is I I like country music. Oh, that and is country, an issue. <laughs> I have the boots right here, girls. I have the boots right here. I always um, do. <laughs> I, have, I have a Zach Brown Band uh, Spotify playlist that I love. So America, <laughs> um, fuck yeah! But, <laughs> but like my my drive to work is very predominantly, you know, Garth Brooks, George Strait, Tim McGraw. Maybe I need to so, switch yeah. it up. And you we know that go, oh, we got to go OG Taylor. <laughs> I haven't been um I my guitar. I, I I don't know why I haven't tried very hard to get into like the voice lessons and and some of and you know like going through YouTube videos and and trying the exercises and stuff like that. I don't I that's another thing for therapy. I don't know why what holds me back on doing that, but um I find that I make the most progress when I am listening to a very feminine singer, um, you know, a little bit more high pitched and, and all that and, and try and sing along with it. Um, again, really glad there's not a microphone there because it is nails on a chalkboard, but there's something about that that really kind of teaches me, I feel about um the the way women speak and especially sing obviously um intonation and some of those things like and, and pronunciation of vowels and things like that that uh i struggle to be conscious of when i'm speaking a lot of times and i feel like when i when i sing along with a with a female singer that after that i'm able to you know i'm able to make more progress on making my voice sound the way i want to hmm. i'm um one of my one of my big jams right now, and don't ask me why, um, is "Genie in a Bottle" by Christina Aguilera. Mm -hmm. I just need to I just need to get like back into that like Christina Britney vibe, and mm -hmm. then that's what I need to do on my drive in on my commute. It's Christina and Britney. Mm -hmm. Britney, yeah, get, get get the the Britney <laughs> bitch vibes going like crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just get your knives out and start dancing yeah, in the kitchen. <laughs> in my bikini. In my bikini. Uh -huh. That's yeah. where I'm at. <laughs> Such a badass. Um, that's awesome. Um free Britney movement done. Mm -hmm. Can we go um, back? Can we Uno reverse? <laughs> Um, before we, I guess, before we end the, the regular, uh, before we go to after hours for those who are subscribers to this sexy time, um, I did want to make sure that we have, uh, everybody who's interested in finding out more about you and or the transverse, um, I'm going to put a little graphic right here. I'm going to put a lap on my timer so that I know that I asked this here and I can't get into my phone lap. There we go. Okay. Uh, where do people find you and find more information and, how was all, what like, you know, where's your uh, Instagram, your website, your date of birth, your list of your fears, um, your social, <laughs> like, like, code number. for things, your mother's maiden name, whichever one you want to answer. Actually, <laughs> so um, yeah. So off. I I'm a right graphic here. and I'm a graphic and web designer by trade. So uh, I've got a pretty decent website together. Um, I. I it needs work, but still it it's pretty darn it's pretty darn decent. Um that's the transverse.net. Um actually I really need to I really need to change it over. In in part of this kind of rebuild, I need to to finally change it over. I do own transverse.tv and um it does point to the transverse.net. So I should I should make that the the main website because it's just so much easier. Um, trans transverse is not an incredibly unique word. So unfortunately, social media has been a little bit more difficult. So, um, yeah, that's, that's why we have a, a .net. Um, and then on Instagram, it's the transverse network, but that's the best place to find out about everything that that's going on there. I'm 
I'm okay with uh, posting on social on Instagram about the things that we're doing. If it's posted anywhere, it's going to be on that Instagram. So that's best. If you want to follow me personally and sort of my sillier random crap that I, I do here and there, that's Emily would go on Instagram. And uh, yeah, those are those are probably the best. Um, I did want to replug the Discord server because um, it is a really great community. It's no longer it no longer carries the transverse brand, but it's still it's it's still our baby, and um, it's run by Rosa, who's our IT person. So it is still transverse family. It's called Transsection, Transsections, Transsection. I should know that. Give me give me a second to bring up my my we'll freaking it, Discord. We'll put it I do in have a graphic too, right? It is about now. Transsection, non-plural. Um, so uh, yeah, that's that's still technically you know transverse family, and uh, there's a lot of great people in there. Really safe community, really loving. So I highly recommend you go and join that. Awesome. Well, thanks so much. We'll uh, you should get transverse dot rocks because dot rocks is a TLD now. So okay, I, I just more money to spend every every year. <laughs> oh my gosh, I, I think I've I spend about like. 200 bucks a year just on domains I have so much mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. cool well uh rachel do you want to you want to you want to do the outro you know that i do oh oh you know girl <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> all right everyone well thank you for joining us here on another fun exciting episode of the girl bad girls once again we have got qt danny b brie saint marie our new best friend, Emily. And of course, my name is Ravishing Rachel. Until next time, my friends. Love you. Bye. I'm not going to call everyone. everybody dummies this time. <laughs> 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 Bye. This has been a production of Girl Dad Girls Podcast. Check out new episodes every Thursday. If you are interested in knowing more, please email info at girldadgirls.com or find us on Instagram at girldadgirls. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.